Welcome to Reddit Aliens. People who rent out their personal property as a service, Lyft, Uber, Airbnb, etc. What are your horror stories? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. I rented my previous car out on Turo. I worked a few blocks from my house so I never used it. Let a guy rent it for a week to take it to the beach. Someone shit in the trunk. Never got an answer why. Never got the stain out. Ran an Airbnb for a year. Four clean cut frat boys had a seven day stay. When they checked out, I sent my usual hope you enjoyed your trip text and they responded that the toilet hadn't been working for their stay. They could have told me this on day one, on hour one. Instead, they used the toilet for a full week. There was a mountain of poop. A mountain. A mountain. I took the toilet tank lid off. The chain had come loose. Four men in their 20s didn't know how to attach a toilet tank chain. Forever and ever, for the rest of my life, I will feel smart, even though I'm the dummy who had to shovel poop mountain into contractor bags. Boy, we're only two stories in and the shit is piling up. What could be next? Last week, a woman who was fully vetted by Airbnb rented my house for what turned out to be a Halloween party. She lied about her intentions, even when I spoke to her over the phone. In just a few hours, they did over $3,000 in damage, and the police evicted 150 people for my 1,200 square foot home. It was only broken up by police because there was a gun shooting that landed somebody in the hospital. All this in a quiet residential neighborhood that is part of a golf resort in a city that is not especially known for crime. I'm sure the damage would have been far worse if the police hadn't come because of the gunshots. Thank God nobody was killed. Good times. I drive for Uber Lyft as my sole means of income right now. It's never a dull moment. I've done about 1,600 rides with Uber and close to 1,000 with Lyft in one year. Most passengers are awesome. I never have issues, even with drunk people. One night though, this drunk girl and her drunk friends get in the car and are acting really obnoxious. I even joined in the banter a little bit to keep the ride fun. Going down a dangerous road at about 45 miles per hour, the girl sitting behind me reaches forward and covers my eyes and pulls my head back against the headrest, jokingly saying something about, what time is it without looking? Game over. I was pissed. Lucky for them, we weren't far from their destination, otherwise I would have left them on the side of the road. I pulled over after dropping them off and left a lengthy complaint with Lyft about a dangerous passenger. I missed this, but when I drove Uber, I picked up five dudes who were going bar hopping. The guy sitting in the middle center seat is barely keeping his head up, but we got a party redeposit bin in the back, so we're good. No, we're not. The smell hits me about five minutes out from the bar. His friend immediately diagnoses the issue. Lucas, goddammit again? Lucas had explosively shit his pants. We suffered together the final stanky three blocks, and I dropped them off. They pulled their buddy out, and everyone walked into the bar, seemingly unfazed. Filed the cleaning, quit Uber the next week. I used to rent a property in Puerto Rico on a year lease basis. My last renters in 2012 left two months before their lease was up and took all the appliances, fridge, stove, microwave, dishwasher, even the effing ceiling fans. After a year-long case court, I won and didn't get a single penny. They said they were broke. They went to jail and I lost a whole year of rent plus almost 6,000 in damages. Never again. I used to drive for Uber, Lyft. Had some bad ones, usually the very drunk, but for the most part, everything was great and went very smoothly. My horror story came from a ride I gave off the books, as it were. Pulled up to pick up location. Girl comes out, the one who ordered the ride, and explains she ordered it for her friend. The card connected to the account has no money on it, but she offers me $20 for the ride in cash, whatever. I needed the money, and the spot said she and her friend needed to go was relatively close. Would have been well under $20 if it was charged through the app. I agree, and she signals to this very tall guy who walks down from the porch. Red flags were already going off. This guy gets in the back, and we take off. I consider myself a pretty social and outgoing person, and soon into the ride, this guy and I are talking about all sorts of things from basketball to movies, as well as our disdain for traffic in the large city we live in. Five minutes or so of this, 
and he brings up his love for firearms. Next red flag. Asks if I own any. I don't, and inform him as such. He then proceeds to pull out two handguns from his backpack, explaining how he just picked them up the other day and loves them, even flashes them to me in the rearview mirror. I'm fully freaking out internally, but I keep my cool as we're nearing the destination. As we pull up to this guy's house, he explains that he is a drug dealer and that he really enjoyed our conversation and thinks I'd make a great driver for him as he makes his drops. I explained that I'm not interested but thanked him for the compliment. Unfortunately, he was fairly insistent I start working for him and would not exit the car till I gave him my phone number. He somehow bought the fake number I gave him and told me he'd call me soon. As soon as he was out of my car, I took off. That was one of the last nights I drove for Uber or Lyft. If the number I randomly gave out actually belongs to anyone, I apologize if you got a late night call from Tim. Picked up a guy in Hollywood at 1am who wanted a lift to the valley. I became increasingly concerned as we drove up into the hills. He told me to turn into a completely dark nature preserve. He told me that his girlfriend was a land use manager for the park and he was going to stay with her overnight. We drove through the dark winding roads of Fryman Canyon and I honestly thought he was going to kill me. There was also a car following us. Turned out he was right. His girlfriend did live out there and I wasn't harassed at all. The car following us was a park ranger, wondering what the heck I was doing out there so late. Some little shit shot BBs through one of our bathroom doors. We know which family did it too, but they denied it and we have no proof. Those parents knew damn well their kid did it too. I'll never understand why they couldn't act like adults and own up to it. Edit. To answer the most common questions, this happened years ago. We did not inspect the place after each time guests stayed at our vacation home because it's four hours away from where we live. Our property manager was supposed to do that, but they were pretty terrible at their job. When they managed our property, guests stole all sorts of things and never were charged for it. Pillows, ornaments, blankets, etc. would regularly be stolen. The property manager or insurance always paid for the missing or damaged items, but it was the principle that people were getting away scot-free that bothered me. We have since switched to a different property manager that is a lot better. Another one that bothered me was when someone put all their cigarette butts in my charcoal grill. Like, seriously? I don't have a problem with smokers, but clean up your effing butts at least. Not a horror story, but frustrating. I have an Airbnb rental in a small ski town, and one of our first guests was a single guy who brought his shih tzu. He stayed for one night and left a one-star review, saying there was no silverware in the house. There's literally like 40 of everything. The power went out across half the mountain due to an ice storm, and he was bored. And finally, that he was disappointed that the fridge wasn't stocked. Clearly says on our listing that food and drink are not provided. Here's the kicker. The next guest that came in went to clean some mud they thought they tracked into the house ended up being dog shit from the asshats shih tzu. I rent out a rustic cabin on my property. The setting is really nice and serene beside a creek and there's a cedar sauna on the property as well. But the cabin is small. There's a queen bed in the loft and a double futon on the main floor and its dimensions are roughly 12 feet by 10 feet. So I tell people the max is 4 people per night. Well, this young guy messages me and asks me if they can have seven, promises they'll be really respectful and clean, and I work with someone who the guy knows so I cave. They left the place kinda clean, but burned a hole in the hardwood floor and broke the handle off the sliding glass door. Turns out, with that many people cooking, etc., the humidity in winter caused some moisture condensation on the track, which subsequently froze, and instead of just leaving it and letting me know, he forced the door closed, breaking the handle in the process. Not an easy feat. Hurt his hand as well. He was sure to let me know code for, don't take my damage deposit or I'll sue you. You can bet I never let more than four in there now. As I was reading this post, the first thing I was thinking was, wow, this cabin sounds lovely. I wish there was a way to find out where it is. I'd love to go there. I drive for Uber. I got a pickup for one of the satellite buildings at a local hospital, no big. I've picked up and dropped off people there before and I had never had an issue. As it turns out, the department I was picking up from was the rehab clinic for the area. As you may or may not know, there's a five minute wait time for the moment we arrive, app determines it, not us. 
The, the moment when the driver can simply cancel and collect the cancellation fee. For obvious reasons, we tend to keep a sharp eye on the clock. The time was getting close to the five minute mark when I got a text. A nurse or doctor on the inside was using Uber to transfer a patient. Okay, still no big, I guess. About 10 seconds later, some bedraggled guy comes out a bit unsteadily and asks if I'm here for a doctor. I said yes, and he said that he was the transfer. He got in, and I started the trip to discover that the trip was for 70 miles away to another rehab clinic. Now, long trips are my jam. I get paid well for them. They are easier and less stressful than a bunch of little trips, so I was pleased. Not two minutes into the trip, he was like, Hey man, I don't really want to go there. Take me over there instead. He wasn't asking, he was telling. Already I'm uncomfortable and decide it's easier to just do what this guy wants rather than stick to the requested destination. He can't pick out exactly which way he wants me to go, so just starts telling me to turn onto random streets. Some point during this adventure, he asks me how much cash I had on me. Red flags all around now. I tell him I don't really carry cash. He sighs, says, I was really hoping for at least $15, and pulls out a small knife. F. So now I'm panicking and pulling out my wallet at the next red light. I had $5 from someone who tipped me earlier that day, but nothing else. He took the bill and told me to keep going. Christ, I'm shaking, a little just telling the story. We arrive at what I assume is a drug house. Guy tells me to wait for him and gets out of the car. I can only assume that he was desperate for his next hit or whatever, and so I didn't really think that through. I shut and locked the door and took off as soon as he was across the street. Went home, reported it to Uber. I didn't file a police report because it was only $5, and Uber said they'd take care of it. I don't really believe it, but I didn't really want to deal with anything else that day anyway. This whole post had alarm bells going off initially, and it just got worse and worse. Glad you made it out okay, but very odd situation. Not so much personal property as it is my experience working at event planning. There were customers who would rent out equipment and treat it as if it were their own. Then there were people who out and out abused our stuff. The worst experience that comes to mind had to do with a caterer whom had consistently rented from us. He was hired for a wedding reception on a ship and asked us for wine glasses, plates, linens, and the like. After that weekend, we received less than half of our stuff back or it was broken. The wine glasses were thrown into the box, they were delivered in, and most of those were destroyed. The same went for the plates, but we did recover most of the linens, not all. My boss told me the caterer he was going to be charged for the broken glasses and plates, and he immediately assumed no fault. Well, dude, don't call us frauds when you sign a contract clearly stating that you agree to reimburse us for damages. He tried disputing it with his credit card company, but we won out. I rented out a newly remodeled home after getting married. I used renter's warehouse as a property manager. They found tenants immediately, and the move-in was painless. Two weeks later, things started to go south. First a toilet broke, then another toilet broke, then a pipe disconnected. The rate of failures was occurring so fast that my $65 home warranty trade calls were exceeding my income from the property. One month later, my pool guy sends a text. Something doesn't look right at your house. No power. I contacted the property manager to verify rent was paid. It was not. I requested a 24-hour inspection to view the property. When I arrived, it was worse than I could imagine. There were holes in the interior and exterior walls. Someone walked around the house with a can of paint and put a postcard-sized amount of paint on every single wall. They stole the basketball hoop. They marked every drawer and closet. They gouged the door frames. Irrigation lines were cut. Almost every plant outside was dead. In the end, everything worked out. Although there was almost $10,000 in damage and unpaid rent, I was able to find renters on my own that agreed to paint and repair the property in exchange for one month's rent and 50% off all deposits. They post everything on Facebook and it looks fantastic. Hmm. During grad school, I rented my car out for maybe six months on relay rides, now called Turo. It went great for a long time. 40 bucks a day buys people a small Nissan sedan. I live in Chicago, and people would use it to drive home to Ohio or Michigan or Wisconsin. I work and live downtown and use CTA to get from A to B, and it's no problem. One girl is even a repeat customer. 
She's a makeup artist and uses it to go to wedding gigs in the burbs. Then I lend it out to a hot young chick for three days. Third day, she asks for an extension with some BS excuse. Whatever, I'll take the money. Next day, she returns it and go to get the keys and she shows me the back bumper. It's bowled inward on the driver's side. I'm not really sure how you make that happen unless someone hits you going very solely on your back and in an odd direction into a hydrant and tries to sob story me. I take the keys and lodge a complaint, use Turo's app to get it fixed. As I drive, I notice a smell of weed in my car and eventually find an unfamiliar lighter under my seat that says flick my bick. All the while, I'm getting sob stories from the girl because it's the holidays and she won't be able to pay the bills if I finalize the complaint because Turo is going to charge her like 500 of the $800 they're going to pay me for my new bumper. Bitch, you hotbox my car and wreck the bumper. Life has consequences. I should have charged you more. I rent my pad close to the beach on Airbnb. Every year there's a music festival and I stay clear of it. Last year, I forgot to lock the dates and got an instant booking. They said they were 8, they were 11. They didn't have enough garden furniture and took the mid-century modern style chairs on the garden. Then they left for the concert and it rained. One star. <laughs>